We are now on the second part of the lecture about parametric curves. Here, I will discuss how to find an expression for a tangent line to a parametric curve, how to determine the concavity of a parametric curve, and lastly, how to compute the length of an arc of a parametric curve. Let's begin. Recall that given y equals f of x, or y is a function of x, where f is differentiable at x equals x naught, then the slope of the tangent line at x equals x naught is given by the derivative of y with respect to x evaluated at x equals x naught, or simply f prime of x naught. Now here, we want to find an expression for the slope of the tangent line to a parametric curve. Let's first define a smooth parametric curve. A parametric curve C defined by the parametric equations x equals x of t and y equals y of t is said to be smooth if both x prime of t and y prime of t are continuous and x prime of t and y prime of t are not both zero at the same time. Therefore, if C is smooth, then x prime of t and y prime of t are not both zero. So in particular, if x prime of t is not zero and y is a function of x, then we have the following equation. dy over dt is expressed as dy over dx times dx over dt. So solving for dy over dx gives us dy over dt over dx over dt, or simply y prime of t over x prime of t. This theorem gives us an expression for the slope of a tangent line to a parametric curve. It states that if c is a smooth curve that is described by the parametric equations x equals x of t and y equals y of t, then dy over dx is given by y prime of t over x prime of t, provided that the denominator x prime of t is non-zero. Let's have an example. Here we want to find the equation of the tangent line to the parametrized curve described by the equations x equals 3t minus cosine t and y equals t squared plus 2 exponential of 3t plus 1 at the point where t equals 0. To answer this, we need two things. First is the point of tangent c, of the tangent line to the parametric curve, and second, the slope of tangent line at the given point. Okay, so... To find the coordinates of the point of tangent C, we just evaluate x and y at t equals 0. Note that when t is 0, x equals negative 1 and y equals positive 3. And so, the point of tangent C is negative 1, 3. We now solve for the slope of the tangent line at the point negative 1, 3. Solving for the derivatives of x and y with respect to t, we get x prime of t equals 3 plus sine t and y prime of t equals 2t plus 6 times the exponential of 3t. And so dy over dx is equal to y prime of t over x prime of t or 2t plus 6 exponential of 3t over 3 plus sine t. Now, to find the slope of the tangent line at the point of tangent c, or at t equals 0, we just evaluate dy over dx at t equals 0. Doing so, we get y prime of 0 over x prime of 0 equals 6 over 3 or 2. And so, using the point-slope form of a line, equation of a line, we get the equation of the tangent line to the parametric curve at t equals 0 given by y minus 3 equals 2 times x plus 1.
Let's now talk about the behavior of the tangent lines to a parametric curve C defined by the parametric equations x equals x of t and y equals y of t. Note that the slope is given by dy over dx, which is dy over dt over dx over dt. So dy over dx is 0 if the numerator is 0 and the denominator is non-zero. So at the points where dy over dt is 0 and dx over dt is non-zero, then the tangent lines to C are horizontal. On the other hand, if the numerator dy over dt is non-zero and the denominator of dy over dx, which is dx over dt, is zero, then the tangent lines to C are vertical. Now, what happens when both dy over dt and dx over dt are zero? If at some point, say t equals t naught, the derivatives are both zero, then the curve C is said to make a sharp turn at the point x of t naught, y of t naught. So what we do is we find or we define the slope of the tangent line to be the limit of dy over dx as t approaches t naught, given that the limit exists. So for the next example, we want to find the values of t where the tangent line to the parametric curve defined by x equals 2t cubed plus 3t squared minus 12t and y equals 3t to the fourth minus 4t cubed plus 7 is horizontal. We also want to find the values of t where the tangent line is vertical. In this example, we want to find the values of t where x prime of t and y prime of t are 0. Solving for x prime of t and y prime of t, we get dx over dt equals 6t squared plus 6t minus 12. On the other hand, dy over dt equals 12t cubed minus 12t squared. So equating both derivatives to 0, we get the following. So first, we equate dx over dt to 0. So we get, in factored form, 6 times t minus 1 times t plus 2 equals 0. So this gives us t equals 1 or t equals negative 2. On the other hand, when we equate dy over dt to 0, we get 12t squared times t minus 1 equals 0. And this gives us t equals 0 or t equals 1. Notice that when t equals 0, dy over dt is 0, dx over dt is non-zero. When t equals 1, both derivatives are equal to 0. And when t equals negative 2, only dx over dt is 0. And so we say that the parametric curve C has a horizontal tangent line at the point where dy over dt alone is 0. That is, when t equals 0. Now, the parametric curve C has a vertical tangent line at the point where only the dx over dt is equal to 0. That is, when t equals negative 2. Now, what happens when t equals 1? So, this is the value of t where both dx over dt and dy over dt are 0. So, recall that what we do in this case is we find the limit of the derivative dy over dx as t approaches 1. So solving for the limit of dy over dx as t approaches 1, we get the limit of dx, uh, dy over dt over dx over dt. Now in factored form, this is equal to the limit of 12t squared times t minus 1 over 6 times t minus 1 times t plus 2. The common factor is t minus 1, and we can cancel this out, okay? And we are left with the limit of 2t squared over t plus 2 as t approaches 1. Solving the limit gives us 2 times 1, uh, 2 over 1 plus 2 or 2 thirds. 
So we say that the curve has a tangent line at the point where t equals 1 that is neither horizontal nor vertical. Let's now talk about the concavity of a parametric curve. Recall that for a curve described by an equation y equals f of x, the concavity of the graph of f on an open interval i is determined by the value of the second derivative f double prime of x. If f double prime of x is positive for all x in the open interval i, then the graph of f is concave up on i. On the other hand, if f double prime of x is negative for all x in i, then the graph of f is concave down on the open interval i. By now, we already know how to compute dy over dx of a parametric curve. So, given dy over dx, how do we compute the second derivative of y with respect to x? Let's consider the following. Again, let c be described by the parametric equations x equals x of t and y equals y of t. Then the second derivative of y with respect to x is given by the derivative of dy over dx with respect to t in the numerator and dx over dt in the denominator. As an example, let's determine the values of t for which the curve described by the parametric equations x equals t minus t squared and y equals t minus t cubed is concave up. Let's also determine the values of t for which the curve is concave up. Okay, so for the solution, let's first find the first derivative of y with respect to x. And this is given by dy over dx equals dy over dt over dx over dt. So the numerator is given by 1 minus 3t squared and the denominator dx over dt is given by 1 minus 2t. So now that we have an expression for dy over dx, we can now solve for the second derivative of y with respect to x. Again, the second derivative of y with respect to x is given by the derivative of dy over dx with respect to t divided by dx over dt. Okay, so doing this, for the numerator, we will get 1 minus 2t times negative 6t minus the quantity 1 minus 3t squared times negative 2 divided by the square of 1 minus 2t in the numerator Okay, using quotient rule, and 1 minus 2t in the denominator. Okay, simplifying this, we will get 6t squared minus 60 plus 2 over the cube of 1 minus 2t. So now we want to determine the values of t for which the second derivative of y with respect to x is positive and when this is negative. Okay, so you can verify that for any real number t, 6t squared minus 60 plus 2 is always positive. Therefore, the sign of the second derivative of y with respect to x now depends on the, on the denominator, 1 minus 2t. And so, the parametric curve is concave up when 1 minus 2t is positive or when t is less than 1 half and is concave down when 1 minus 2t is negative or when t is greater than 1 half. This is the graph of the given parametric curve. Notice that the curve changes its concavity at t equals 1 half since the parametric curve is concave up when t is less than 1 half and is concave down when t is greater than 1 half. We are now in the last part of the discussion about the calculus of parametric curves. So here we talk about the arc length of parametric curves. Let's consider the following theorem. It states that if C is a smooth parametric curve described by the equations x equals x of t and y equals y of t, and that C is traced exactly once as t varies from a to b, then the length L of the curve C on the closed interval a, b is given by the integral from a to b of the square root of the square of the x over dt plus the square of dy over dt, dt. Here's a sketch of the proof. 
Let's partition the closed interval AB where the smooth parametric curve C is traced exactly once okay, into N subintervals. Doing so divides the curve C into N subarcs. Now, the length of each subarc can be approximated by the line segment joining the endpoints of the subarc. And to find the length of the parametric curve that is traced from t equals a to t equals b, we use the idea of the limit of a Riemann sum. So doing so gives us the integral in the above theorem. Okay, so the whole proof for this theorem can be seen in uh, our module. Here's an example. Find the length of the portion of the curve described by the equations x equals 40 cubed over 3 plus 1 and y equals 2 minus t cubed from t equals 1 to 4. Okay, so for the solution, we will need dx over dt and dy over dt. Now, since dx over dt, which is equal to 40 squared, and dy over dt equals negative 3t squared, are both continuous and never both zero on one four or on the given interval, then the curve is said to be smooth on the given interval. Okay, and so the arc length, which is denoted by capital L, is given by the following integral. Integral from one to four of the square root of the square of 40 squared plus the square of negative 3t squared dt. Okay, so simplifying this integral, we will get the integral from 1 to 4 of 5t squared dt. Solving this, we will get 5t cubed over 3, and then evaluating this from t equals 1 to 4, we will get L equals 105. And so, we say that the length of the parametric curve is 105 units. Now, let's consider a parametric curve C that is piecewise smooth on the closed interval AB. When we say piecewise smooth, we mean C is a union of N smooth parametric curves C1, C2, up to C sub N. Okay, and we can obtain the length of the arc of the parametric curve C by taking the sum of the arc lengths of the N smooth parametric curves C1, C2, up to Cn. Okay, so here's an example. Let's find the length of the asteroid x equals cosine cube t, y equals sine cube t, where t is from 0 to 2 pi. So this parametric curve has a special name. It's called an asteroid, which you can see in the following slide. Okay, As you can see, the asteroid is piecewise smooth. So we need to partition this into four smooth parametric curves corresponding to the following intervals. Okay, so from 0 to pi over 2, from pi over 2 to pi, from pi to 3 pi over 2, and from 3 pi over 2 to 2 pi. Now, remember that in our example, x is cosine cube t, y equals sine cube t, and t is from 0 to 2 pi. Okay, also in the arc length formula, the integrand is given by the square root of the square of dx over dt plus the square of dy over dt. Okay, so applying this in our example gives us the square root of the square of negative 3 cosine squared t sine t plus the square of 3 sine squared t cosine t. Okay, so simplifying this, we will get 3 times the absolute value of cosine t times the absolute value of sine t. Okay, so let's first consider the interval from 0 to pi over 2. Okay, and let's call the arc length in that interval to be L1. Okay, so since t is from 0 to pi over 2, then t is said to be in quadrant 1. And in quadrant 1, both sine and cosine are positive. Okay, and so... Removing this absolute value, we will get the integral from 0 to pi over 2 of 3 cosine t sine t dt. Okay, so by u substitution, we can compute this integral as follows. 
Okay, so we have three halves sine squared t and we evaluate t from 0 to pi over 2. So this gives us three halves units. Okay, so now let's consider the length of the arc from pi over 2 to pi. Okay, and let's call that L2. Okay, so we still have three absolute value of cosine t, absolute value of sine t as the integral. Now, if t is in the interval pi over 2 to pi, then we are in quadrant 2. And in quadrant 2, cosine t is negative and sine t is positive. And so, this is equal to negative 3 cosine t, sine t dt. Okay, so solving this, we will get negative 3 halves of sine squared t. And then we evaluate t from pi over 2 to pi. And this gives us 3 halves units. Okay, so now you can see the pattern. Okay, in the same manner, you can show that the portions on the intervals, on the remaining intervals, pi, 3 pi over 2, and 3 pi over 2 to 2 pi, are each of length 3 halves units. Okay, and so the arc length of the asteroid is just 3 halves units times 4, or 6 units. Okay? So this ends my lecture about the calculus of parametric curves. So for the exercises, you can answer these items on your own. Okay, thank you for listening.